Spain just beat Italy 1-0, and there's a lot to take away from this game, but the good thing is, Spain won, we can get away with that, and our boys played, there's a lot to touch on about the Barcelona boys alone, but the Spain side was interesting, and so was this Italian side, so let's get into it a little bit. So, from the jump, Spain looked very dangerous throughout the entire game for the most part. They were creating chances, they were putting balls on net too, making Donnarumma make saves as well. The problem was, though, I, I think there was a little bit of a lack of chemistry between more or less Morata and Lamini Mall and then Morata and uh, Nico Williams. They, they just did not work together that well. I think Pedri was okay with linking up with Lamini Mall and Nico in a way that Morata wasn't. And that is a big reason, I think. The no goals were sc scored in the first half. And then the really the only goal that was scored was kind of a garbage goal, a scrappy own goal that, you know, you, you're not incredibly in love with when you see. And I think I'm a little bit disappointed coming away from a game like this, having seen, because there were so many chances for better goals than this. For this to be the only one that was scored, you know, I, I think it was disappointing a little bit to me. Uh, we, there's a lot more to talk about too. As the game progressed, it got a little bit different. This The Spain side did not do as wonderful uh, throughout the entire match it got to about the 70th minute it slowed down a lot Italy I would argue just turned it on Italy were really flat for most of this game and maybe that was uh, Luciano Spalletti's plan either way it didn't really work out they were really poor for 65 70 minutes we're gonna go ahead and rank uh, some of these players give them a rating so we can get a better idea of how each guy fit into De La Fuente's system we'll start from the back as we usually do with Unai Simone I think he did his job, didn't really need to make any saves, was there when he needed him. I think he played decent balls, he was fine, seven. I didn't really make any mistakes, didn't really solve any problems, seven is fine. Kukurea, I think he was surprising today. I don't like him, I don't think he's a great footballer most of the time. I'm not impressed with him when he plays. There were some times today where he was shaky, where he was on the last man for like a corner. <clears throat> he was still okay, sorry about that cough if you're, if you're wearing headphones. Uh, now, Laporte and Lenormand, I'm rating them together. I don't think they were good. I, I really do not have much confidence in this duo. And that's surprising because normally I like Laporte, but he has been in Saudi Arabia. He's been playing there, and this is the first time I've seen him in a long time, and I wasn't impressed with him. I, I don't think either one of them were a domineering, confidence-inducing center back in the way I want. Kukurea deserves an 8. I think he was confident played decent balls, and, and contributed to this game a lot. We saw him come up a lot. The other two guys, I'm going to give him sixes. And and in, I'm going to give him Laporte a six and Le Normand a five. I think Normand was slightly worse, but I think they were just similarly poor. I think we, they needed some more strength back there. And honestly, Kubarsi could have changed this game. It's wild to say about a 17-year-old, but I firmly believe it could have been true. Hopefully they figure it out as they go on, because I think against better teams... Uh, it, that combination could be problematic for Spain. Denny Carvajal was fine. I He was not as good as we've seen him for Real Madrid this season. Uh, he, we didn't see him pop up much going forward at all, which was surprising to me. Uh, he inverted a decent amount. He had a lot of freedom to do either inverting or overlapping. I don't think he overlapped with Laminia Mall at all. Uh, he was very much so restricted. I'm going to give him a six. I just don't think he was very a very big player today. He got the yellow card at the end, and Rodri got a yellow card too. He's going to be our next guy. Rodri, I think he played really well. I think he was one of the keys in the control in the beginning of the match uh, alongside with his other midfield partners, but I I'm going to give him a 7 because he got a yellow. I, I, I might even want to give him a 6 because that yellow can be problematic. Again, another yellow means they miss a match, and I'm not certain that goes outside of the group stage, but... If you get two yellows accumulated throughout the tournament, you miss the next match. And so he's got to be really careful now. Uh, but Fabian Ruiz, I think he was probably the best midfielder today for the first 70 minutes of this match. Fantastic. He had a really good shot from outside the box very early on. You know, on a different day against a different keeper might have a goal as well. So I think he deserves an eight, potentially even a nine. It's not a nine, though, because he was not good at the end of the game. He was tired. He was, you know, him and Rodri both were not linking up wonderfully as the game got on, as Italy picked up their pace. And you need Spain to be able to keep up with that. Uh, when they play better teams, specifically Germany right now is the best team I've been seeing. When they play a better team, they need to defend better. They need to organize better when they are being pushed. Today, they didn't. 
Thankfully, Italy is not a great side, and so they were able to get away with it. But I think against a better team that can sustain that pressure for a longer period of time, it could be problematic. They were able to play through the press pretty easily for the first 60 minutes. Italy had some sort of a press going, didn't do much because Rodri and Fabian Ruiz both played very well together. But as it went on, that changed a little bit. Fabian Ruiz lost a little bit in his tank, and uh, and, and so that's why I'm giving him an 8. Pedri, though, I think Pedri linked up well. I think I wanted a little bit more from him. I think he was pressing okay. I think he was linking up wonderfully and getting through the lines very well, but doesn't come away with an assist or a goal. Uh, For the position he was playing, as far forward as he was playing, I'm going to give him a six and a half, uh, maybe a seven, to be generous because he did play pretty well. But he was subbed off eventually. And uh, and I would say he was probably the weakest besides Morata. I don't think he had a good game, but I'll get to him in a second. I'm going to go to Nico Williams next. I think Nico was really, really good in the beginning of this match. As, you know, it's a similar story for a lot of these guys, but he was getting around Di Lorenzo and the double team that he was getting over there with Fratesi pretty easily. Good for him. Uh, I like seeing him. I, every time I see him, I want him to be in the Blaugrana. I don't know if he's going to be with these Danny Olmo rumors, but... He looked good. I'm going to give him a seven and a half only because he got unlucky and hit the bar. I'm, you know, I'm going to give him an eight. I think he deserves an eight, even though he didn't score a goal. He was really good today and he probably did, you know, deserve some credit for one. Uh, next, Lamine Mall, I think might have even been better than Nico Williams. Didn't hit the crossbar in the same way, but I, I think he was even better at times and getting through tight spaces. We saw in one situation where he dribbled wonderfully through the middle. Look up the highlights for it if you haven't seen it yet. And then Morata took the ball off of him, took the ball way too wide and forced a terrible angle for himself. Couldn't get a shot off, really. And I think he did get a corner out of it, but it really wasted the chance. And so Lamine Ma, same rating as Nico. I'm going to give him an eight as well. I think I, that's what I gave Nico. But Morata, man, I'm going to give him a six. <sighs> He had so many opportunities to link up better, and he he did take one good shot from outside the box, but otherwise I was not impressed with him today at all. Yeah, I'm disappointed in Morata. Um, I guess I'm not surprised that I'm disappointed, but I don't think he was good today. There was a lack of chemistry, which is wild because Morata starts every game for them at striker, but I don't think he was good. I don't think he deserves much more than a six. Uh, and then come on the subs, Ferran Torres was very much so oblivious in this game. Not oblivious, but um, just invisible. He, he didn't do much today. He didn't make big a big impact. He wasn't much of an outlet. He pressed okay, but he was pretty far, pretty deep. Um, it wasn't. He he came on for the minimal in the seventy first minute, and he did not occupy a second striker position like we've seen a lot from him. For Barcelona, he was very much so a right winger playing pretty deep often because Italy were pushing when he came on and he wasn't great. I don't think he was very good today. I don't think that's the position that he excels in. But if this is any sign from De La Fuente, that might be where we see him for the rest of the tournament. And so I don't know how if he's going to be good, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, Alex Baena came on as well for Pedri at the same time. I thought Baena was fantastic. He brought on a lot of energy, made a couple really good turns out of pressure uh, to get away from the midfield, push the defensive line. Again, didn't lead to any goals or anything, but I thought he brought on some good energy and and linked up pretty well. So I'm going to give him a a seven and a half. I think that's fair. And uh, I don't know what I gave Ferran, but maybe a six and a half. I don't think he had a ton of opportunities, made one good cross, uh, but I think a six and a half is fair. Ayozi Perez too. He got himself into much better positions than we saw from Ferran. I don't know if that was just the nature of where Ferran was playing. He had to play pretty deep. Ayozi Perez, maybe Italy was pushing less on their right side. Ayozi Perez was playing on the left wing for Spain. So maybe he could just get into space more. But wherever he was, he got a really big opportunity that Donnarumma made a pretty good save on. But it wasn't the greatest finish. I thought it was good in the moment. When we saw the highlights, it it could have been tucked away in the corner a little bit more. Especially with the time he had on the ball. You got to ask for more from him. And uh, and then Oyarzabal ball and Marino. I, I don't think Mikel Oyarzabal did much. I think he made one or two good turns, but 
I'm going to give Oyoze Perez, going back to that, uh, a seven just because he... Uh, no, I'm going gi- to give him a six and a half as well. Same as Ferran. I think he just missed that chance and, and, and I think he needed to link up a little bit better as well. There were a couple times where he got pressed out of the game pretty easily. Oyarza Ball didn't do much. I think there were a couple good moments and everything, but I think he drew a foul right to release some pressure, uh, if I remember correctly. But otherwise, not great. And Mikel Marino came on for like four minutes right at stoppage time there to waste time. Uh, I think he should have come on earlier. I think that was bad from De La Fuente. I think uh, Fabian Ruiz was gassed a lot earlier than that. And I think that is something we need to note here, right? A lot of these Spanish guys looked really tired. Nico Williams looked exhausted 60 minutes in. Uh, Fabian Ruiz looked exhausted at like the 70 minute mark. So, I mean, Maul and Pedri, Pedri always looks tired. <laughs> So I, I think we, we got to see how these guys do under better circumstances against better teams or worse circumstances against better teams. But they came out with a win today. They are a good team. They deserve more than they got today. I think they put up so many good chances. According to SofaScore, they had five big chances and 20 shots. That's pretty good. Donnarumma had to make eight saves and they had a 1.9 XG while Italy only had 0.8, uh, 0.18 XG. So, for as much as I flamed their defense, they didn't really concede many chances, but I think that's more of how good their press was or how much it immobilized Italy for so long and, uh, and, and how well their midfield ends and wingers were able to win the ball back. Uh, I think it's, it's something to be happy about going forward, especially considering how well they did against Croatia, a team that is known for being decent on the ball. Um, it, it could be good against teams that, that play like that, but Italy were just not good enough for Spain today. Spain were, played pretty well, and now they can just play the alternate alternates against Albania. I would assume Rodri's going to be benched. Same with Lenormand because they are on yellow cards. They have to be careful. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll probably see them sit out. Hopefully we see some Fed on Torres action. If Fermin Lopez gets a start, that would be crazy. But... The team is good. I think they are. The, they looked second best to only Germany uh, in, in the tournament so far. And, and so I'm excited to see what comes from them. Uh, for those of you guys wondering, this is the new, this is going to be the new look of this studio for the next month or so. I'm in my parents' basement. Uh, we are here until uh, my new apartment is ready to start. The lease doesn't start until August. So I'll be here until then. I'm also, I want to tell you guys, I'm going to be live on TIFO from now on. For most of the, not most of the Euro matches, but for when I am live, they'll be live on this platform called Tifo, where we can build a little bit of a stronger community. It's a little bit of a, uh, it's an, e- there's easier ways to get to know everybody. There's also the ability to have people come up on stream, pe- like people co-host with me that are in the stream. So uh, I, I want to test it out. So uh, the links will be down below to sign up. Just uh, like my account or follow my account, whatever it's called, and. I'll also tweet out and put on Discord whenever I go live on there, so you will see it. But thank you for watching today. I'm excited to see the Spanish team play. Uh, Lumini Mall looked wonderful. Pedri looked pretty good as well today. And I'm excited to see more of Fermin Lopez especially. I'm not that excited to see more of Ferran Torres, though, because he's looking like he's going to be played in his second best position this week or this month. But it is what it is. At least he's getting playing time. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.